Hey guys, I'm Nick and welcome to my channel. In this tutorial we will be checking out rigid body simulations, morphing and a few other cool things. I found this animation from Strike and L and uh, I know he is X Particles guru and really X Particles beast and I wanted to recreate this in Houdini because the like logically thinking the algorithm here shouldn't be that heavy i mean we have rigid bodies we should keep them in place and we are morphing some of them to spheres and the key thing is those little rocks are also spheres so the poly count is the same so we should be able to morph them but as always before we start i would like to say huge thanks to everyone of you who are supporting me by purchasing my project files. You can find many, many cool setups on my Gumroad and on my website. Link is in the description. And for this project, also all the project files are in the first link in the description. Your support allows me to dedicate more time to create these tutorials and share them with you. So again, thanks a lot to every one of you. All right, so to start with, we will need to create our rocks. So let's go here and we drop a geo node. Let's call it rocks. Here you can see that I have six types of rocks. Um, basically, it's a sphere that may be squished, swashed, or I mean deformed in any way. And the primitive type set to polygon, uniform scale, it's up to you, and frequency set to seven, just because we need our mountain node to displace it and sort of create a rock. So you can see I have different rocks here if I go through the mountain nodes. And absolutely crucial is to UV them because we will be using normal maps and all this stuff to create them more realistic. And here I'm using labs and labs is, um, here you can see I have um, in shelves, you can install Houdini Labs, or you can use UV MRAP, UV Texture, like something. Basically, what Auto UV does, UV MRAPs your um, mesh, and in this way, this MRAP is looking okay. I mean, not the best one, but yeah, definitely works. And then you plug them all into the merge node, and you have this um, ugly looking thing. But yeah, then we just drop a null. It's called out rocks and that's it for our rocks. You can create, I don't know, 20 different rocks or just stick with three of them. Um, completely up to you. So now when we have our rocks, let's go and create our actual simulation. So for your convenience and for my convenience and to place my OCD, um, everything is yeah <laughs> in these um, boxes. So it's easier to understand what's where. But basically, we start with our shape, and uh, to recreate a strike and else work, we we obviously want a torus. Um, you can create any shape. You can even get a human fillet with uh, rocks, and then do something with that. Yeah, basically, we start with the torus. Ray is set to 2.5. The only thing that I modified from the default settings, and then I added the scatter, which yeah, scattered all these all these rocks here. You can use points from volume um, to scatter them inside the volume um, inside the torus but i don't think it's necessary for now let's decrease the total count to something like 300 and it will be easier for for us to understand then we need to scatter both rocks and both our spheres what i need to do here is let's say we want to scatter some rocks and i dropped an object merge node and what it does here in the object one i should specify what object i should import and in this case it's obg rocks out rocks so you see we have our clump of overlapping rocks and then we should drop a connectivity node and what it will do it will add a class attribute to every point and then we also need to drop the attribute wrangle. And in this attribute wrangle, I want to randomize the P scale, which will make some rocks smaller and some of them bigger. And to do that, I just want to write at P scale equals fit01 changes the value. So it is in range of, in my case, 0 0.3 and 1. So basically, 
and grab a random which as you can see creates a random number between 0 and 1 from a seed and our seed is at btnum so every time it will be like random and different and then I remap it to be not from 0 and 1 but 0 0.3 and a 1 because we don't want these extremely small particles and your RBD will glitch and if you like feed something very very small and then I want to randomize the orient so they are facing they are rotating all different directions and this uh, cheers goes to Entagma where they I think they, they showed scattering the line in that tutorial but this attribute from pieces I, I wasn't aware of this node for, for a long time but it's it's super cool so basically what it does if you write down piece attribute class here and set the mode to random it will randomly pick one of our rocks that's super cool and then you just plug this attribute from pieces into our copy to points and look what we have cool scattered rock then let's scatter some spheres so here i created my sphere obviously yeah we don't need this merge even and, and this connectivity so then i just drop a attribute triangle so on the same p scale and copy it to points so yeah we have our set of spheres right now super crucial thing here in copy to points is to check this pack and instance and despite that after copy to points we are unpacking them we should specify that we want to transfer all attributes in our unpack node all right so let's get back to our rocks so now we want to set up the morph and morph uh, in this tutorial is done with attribute transfer you can probably use mask from attribute but i've tried that and in this scenario i found it easier to set up with a, just a regular attribute transfer so we need to colorize our rocks to be black and then we set up a sphere and i'll show you with a wireframe that it's here uh, we colorize it to be red and then we transform it and here you can see that I'm rotating the sphere every frame I'm rotating the sphere by the frame number divided by 2 so basically at the frame 30 the rotation of the sphere will be 15 degrees and it goes like this then we can set up our attribute transfer and you can see that if I plug our black rocks into the first input and red sphere into the second input and I change the source and group type to points attributes here in the points I set them to be CD and conditions kernel radius 5.8 distance threshold 0.32 you can see that we are colorizing All right, that's cool, but somehow we should morph them now. So we need to drop an unpack node, transfer all attributes. You can see they are unpacked. And now we drop an attribute triangle. And here again, I write down why we use linear interpolation and what it is. You can check out my previous tutorial with a sphere consisted of these lines and affected by noise. Right now, I will just briefly tell you what do we have here so here we will be morphing between our rock state and our sphere state so basically here you can see that uh, where we have our mask we are interpolating from point position of rock and point position of sphere so that's how our, our rocks become spheres again more detailed explanation you can find that in my previous tutorials then we need to pack that for our rbd simulation so i'm using assemble node and i'm transferring attributes p scale and m scale and m scale is used further to animate the scale of the rocks and prevent any overlaps and to be fair credits for this non-overlapping rbd fill thing goes to cgvkey or tokaru i'll link i'll link that in the description and you can go and check his uh, project files and articles and all that stuff so from our assemble we should create rbd geometry and we also should create rbd constraints that will keep our rocks in one place so they don't fly away let's start with the geometry because it's easier so first of all we should animate the scale and not the p scale but m scale which basically is my scale yeah and basically here in attribute wrangle you see that i'm also linearly interpolating between m scale being 0 to 1.5 and this is because i want my spheres to be bigger than 
the rocks. So here I set the M scale and then after assemble I drop an attribute triangle and I animate the M scale to be multiply equal by this channel called scale. So basically what I'm doing here is you can see here the scale is 0.114 and then frame 21 it's 1. So that's how you can animate them to be their default state. So that's basically they, they kind of grow. And then you plug that into another attribute wrangle and you set the found overlap variable to be one. Now let's set up constraints. From the assemble tab, we draw an attribute wrangle and we set the ID value of each point to be ptnum. And then from that attribute wrangle, we drop another attribute wrangle and set the name to be nothing, to be blank. Because our RBD simulation will set up the names itself. And then we should merge our set ID and set name wrangles into the merge node. And then we drop an add, we add a points. And here you should select polygons. Yeah, actually we're adding polygons. You can check remove unused points, um, select by group and add by attribute and attribute name should be id and now we have everything to create constraints so string variable called constraint name equals pos string variable at constraint type equals position and rest length equals zero so now we have everything to create our simulation in dotnet so let's drop a dotnet and by the way i was doing this on my macbook uh, which is like M1 MacBook Air base base level machine. I don't know how, but that MacBook was twice as fast as my laptop, which is Rock Strix Scar something with i7, 24 gigs of RAM and RTX 2070. Only thing there, and I thought it might be helpful if you don't have like much RAM, you can limit the cache memory because by default it's 5000 and you can limit it to be let's say 100 if you have not that much of a RAM and you're constantly like using swap and all that stuff. Um, yeah, and let me know in the comments if you want some comparisons between my main Windows machine and my MacBook because at some point this thing surprises me. All right, so back here in our .NET, not that much of things we can do and we should do. <laughs> so. Um, we start with dropping RBD packed object and initial object type is set to create deforming active objects is super super crucial because without that it won't work just simply won't work geometry source first context geometry because we are plugging that here into our first input it's first context geometry override attributes is M scale because we want to actually like start with this small objects and then we grow to our like like this initial state initial state in herd velocity from point velocity bullet data shrink collision geometry set to zero collision padding set to zero shrink collision geometry unchecked and physical compute center of mass is also unchecked um, then we also need pop speed limit and pop drag and this is because we don't want our rocks to kind of fly very very fast or spin without control because again we don't have gravity and you may saw all these fails of uh, astronauts trying to catch their toothbrush or toothpaste and basically the same physical scenario here so we had a pop speed limit and maximum speed is set to 10 maximum spin is set to 3 and pop drag um, a resistance set to 4. In rigid body solver we plugged our RBD object into the first input and our pop speed limit and pop drag into the last input. So in rigid body solver number of substeps set to 30, sleeping time set to 0. In constraint solver constraint durations set to 10, constraint solver parallel goes. Ensure islands are independent unchecked, constraint force mixing to 0.5. Um, yeah, that's, I think that's all. So then we need to drop our constraints and actually make constraints for our spheres and um, rocks. So we drop a spring constraint relationship. So here in data options, we need to set in the constraint data, we need to set strength to be 1000, rest length to be zero and damping to be 10. And super crucial thing is here in data name, we should set our constraint name, which in our case is pause. And then we drop a constraint network. 
constraint network is actually our second context geometry, which is here, RBD constraints, and we drop it in, in, into our second one. And basically from that, it already knows what to do, so we can hit play and boom. You see these red or yellow, yellow dots, these are or spring constraints. Here you can see that how it like expands and here you can see how it contracts again because those are springs. And here you can see that all of the overlaps are gone and our spheres are traveling to our torus. So after you are done with the, with the dotnet, you can drop somewhere elsewhere, <laughs> you can drop a dot import node. And here you specify your dotnet and import style is set to fetch back geometry from dot network. So then we obviously unpack that and here are two options for you. What you can do is render out it with Redshift or you can render it out somewhere else. Or you can use Mantra, but I don't know Mantra. So for me, in this case, it's easier to export that to Cinema 4D and kind of art direct it. It's just my personal preference because I worked many years in Cinema 4D and I'm trying to do these tutorials at least once a week or I try to do them twice a week. And the speed of production really matters to me without sacrificing the quality of these tutorials so many of you guys ask me in comments why i do that but it depends from project to project sometimes i'm okay rendering with redshift sometimes it's really easier to set up all the textures and all that stuff in cinema 4d for me so basically what i've done i file cached that and then output uh, rop alembic if you want to go and render it out in Houdini, you, you can do the following. So you should promote the CD attribute from point to primitive. Then you can group by, let's say, red value more than zero. And let's say it's, it will be a group two. And then you can drop another group and let's say uh, CD R equals zero. So it will be another group. Um, then you can yeah just colorize it, uh, whatever you want. Or you can also drop one material, specify that it should be on the group two. And you can drop another material, it will be on the group three. If you want to follow me to Cinema 4D, um, let's open it up and I will show you the scene setup. So here's my setup. Yeah, imported this Alembic. So you drag and drop your Alembic, it's super simple, just then I dropped the material. So I have material of rock and I have some sort of specular material. And here in the mixer, by the way, you can click view and auto arrange selected and it will be kind of arranged. So we have our vertex map, which is here, our vertex color tag. You can use that to mix between the, the objects. So yeah, that's basically how I, how I mix that. And yeah, super simple three point light system. One is like, like a top light somewhere here. And then another one is from that side. And this one is, yeah, just a straight top light. And I rendered two passes, this one, and then a kind of like a close up. So, and as usual, I'm using Fox Farm to render nearly every of my tutorials. And here you can see that I'm rendering two scenes each 270 frames. And they were done in like, I don't know, like 10 minutes. And uh, one of them cost me like five bucks and another one cost me actually 10 bucks. But I assume that's because I'm using adaptive sampling. And here I got much more frame covered here um, so yeah it took a bit longer to render out and if you also want to render cheap fast and with actually amazing quality check out my affiliate link in the description you can sign up and you will get extra coupon credits on your account so you can test it out and see how fast and amazing this service is so yeah that's that's it for today thanks a lot for watching and i really hope it was useful for you and if you like this video be sure to to subscribe to my channel and if you want to support me and see even more tutorials in nearest future please feel free to check out my website for many useful assets and project files and setups i'm sure you will find something that will boost your workflow I'll be back very soon. Bye.